the Istanbul terror attack has now raised new concerns about security here in the United States. With more on that, we welcome retired four-star general Michael Hayden. He served as director of both the CIA and the NSA. He also helped to shape America's security and intelligence responses following the attacks here September 11, 2001. General, it's very good Thank to have you. you. Uh, with regard to the attacks of 2001, certainly, especially if you were here in, the, in New York City following them, uh, so much discussion in the days and the weeks and the months that followed was how long until we see right. another one of right. those. We heard it echoed again uh, just a couple of weeks ago in, in Orlando in the wake of those attacks. But it is it seems to be something we discuss now with increasing and rather alarming regularity. How concerned sure. are you that we'll see what happened in Istanbul or Brussels happen here? Can I, can I give you a sense of how I think about it yeah. now? I, I, I compare it to soccer. Bear with me. No, it, yeah. it actually helps me organize my thoughts. Okay. So you've got a soccer field, mm -hmm. kind of normally three zones. You've got our defensive zone, you've got their defensive zone, then you have the midfield. Yeah. So you, you began with 9-11. 9-11, we were playing defense. We were pretty much all gathered up in the box and it was a lot of close-in shots being hammered and some of them looked like penalty kicks and the inevitable happened. The ball went into the back of the net. Yeah. And so after 9-11, we kind of said, you know, we don't need to just play inside our 18. And so we began to use the whole field and we actually quite aggressively and quite successfully went up inside their 18 and began pounding their goal. Mm -hmm. You know, we invaded Afghanistan and although it became more complicated later, at the beginning, it took the home field away from them. We then had targeted killings along the Afghan-Pakistan border, Somalia, Yemen, Libya. We take a strong fight to the enemy. And here in the middle, the midfield, which if you fall soccer, that's where you want to lose, that's kind of my job. Uh, not me personally, but my agencies, yep. NSA, CIA. In essence, 9-11 was a plot hatched here, delivered here. And so if you were really good in the midfield, since those plots were big, slow-moving, multi-thread, multi-actor, needed a lot of money, eh, you picked it up. 06, wide-body plot, sports bottles as explosives over the Atlantic, all over it. We saw another one of those plots developed here, exported here, Christmas Day 2009. A little bit of luck, that one was stopped too. Fundamentally, we're good here. And those plots that we used to fear, the one you teed up, you know, another 9-11, really hard to do. What's happening now, though? They're not transiting the midfield. Right. They're popping up entirely from our defensive zone. They're, they're coming from self-radicalized, lonely, unbalanced, searching individuals here in the defensive zone. All that energy we've put here, got to keep doing it, but it's not relevant to stopping these. So now, so now what do you do to stop that kind of an attack Number one, you continue to play offense. Keep hammering them. You motivate people here because they're successful over here. Well, hell, that's a pretty easy solution. Let's make them less successful. Right? Make them less attractive. But now, what do you want to do as a citizen to make it more likely that, frankly, your law enforcement agencies are going to be able to discover, and listen to this phrase, are going to be able to discover and identify and stop the not yet guilty. Right. The, the using intelligence, getting yeah. in the way of this before it can begin. I mean, we hear a lot about uh, the administration will say, uh, we're winning this fight. They'll point to territorial losses and, and, in and, and, Syria and, they put and genuine, they put to genuine achievements which might not quite add up to we're winning this fight. Aren't these transit hubs, these soft targets, these <clears throat> target-rich environments, if you will, in, isn't the, home, that, in the homeland? Yeah, isn't that the actual front line of this war? Oh, of course it is. It, it is one of the front lines. Now, look, we want to fight over here to make that a front line, too. We do not want to make this sanctuary mm -hmm. for these people. But even if we succeed in making this not sanctuary, that doesn't mean that this is also not a front line. Mm -hmm. but, but the problem is... Right? Being the people we are, we have far more limited tools to deal with the threat that pops up here than we did with one that pops up here and then has to cross How over. How do you believe the Obama administration has done? Over here, over in there. the offensive zone. In the offensive zone. Yeah, late and light, uh, over-regulated and under-resourced, but getting better. 
We, we, we are now getting to the point in terms of why the, slow to the punch. The, why? The, why? It, it, that's a pure policy response. Let me give you. Let me give you a, a perfect example. Mm -hmm. uh, ISIS has one powerful funding stream, and they just sell oil. That was pretty much off limits because of fear of collateral damage. Paris then happens. The weekend after Paris, we put that oil distribution network on the target list. All right. I mean, what was different on Thursday that said no, that was now okay on Saturday to say yes? Optics? Other, was other, it optics? Uh, yeah, other than a policy or, and or political decision on our part to go do what they had to do. Now, from a military point of view, the way you do this is you don't, you, you don't begin to build from how much am I willing to put into this. Mm -hmm. The way you do this from a military point of view is what is my desired effect? And then what does that effect require me to do? We've been working at this end rather than working back from the definition of success. All that said, the president has authorized the kinds of things that a lot of folks like me have been recommending for two to three years. More firepower, looser rules of engagement, more American troops, more American troops forward and embedded with allied forces. Mm -hmm. All of those are positive movements. Let's get to the midfield then. Again, intelligence uh, agencies such as the CIA, the NSA, where they can hold the ball, right. hold, keep possession there. Yeah. However, if you have the commitment on the part of the enemy to give one's life for the cause, right. that is the ultimate commitment. Yeah. In the soccer game then that we're speaking of, an opponent that is willing to run until they fall, how does one stop yeah. that? How do we match that commitment? So, so in, in, in the mid-zone, it is ideally suited to stop the kind of plot we saw in 9-11. Big, slow-moving, multiple actors, multiple threads. Mm -hmm. Catastrophic against iconic targets, all right? That, that requires a whole lot of action across the midfield, which we, which we have actually gotten quite good at detecting, all right? And so, so I think, I think we're, we're, we're very healthy there. But the enemy has now decided that he is quite content with an attack carrying out, carried out by an individual or two or three using readily available weapons like automatic weapons, self-generated here, without connection back here, without direction back here. In fact, the only connection between here and here might be some remote connectivity via the web and websites. More often than not, it's just pure encouragement mm -hmm. that then inspires someone to go act here. So now, You've jumped over your capacity here. It doesn't apply. And now you're faced to deal with these folks largely with your domestic police force, the FBI and local law enforcement. And th those, those are the most restricted arms in our national security portfolio. This is a worthy discussion in any year, certainly in an election year. Uh, we have our presumptive nominees. What do you make of the responses of both uh, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton? Yeah, uh, I, let me be very candid. N none of Donald Trump's responses seems to have coherence in relationship in relationship to the problem I just described mm -hmm. for you. All right, uh, Secretary Clinton. Um, I, I, look, I, we got a long time about baggage that Secretary Clinton might have, but let me just answer your question. I think in the sense you asked in this narrow national security lane. Yes. All right. Um, I think she's got it pretty much right, and let me let me double down. I actually think she would have done these things that we're now doing here. She would have done them earlier. In other words, from this narrow lane, I think she would have made what I thought were the right decisions far earlier than President Obama. General Hayden, very much appreciate. Thank you. Today. Thank you.